I wanted a helicopter. And, and I told people, you know, hey, if you ever come across a helicopter fuselage, you know, call me, call me, yeah. send it to me, text it to me, email it to me, send me smoke signals, whatever, and I'll buy it. And, and I said it enough times that eventually I found a helicopter <laughs> and I couldn't not buy it because yeah. I'd been talking such yeah. big shit for so long. <laughs> Welcome back to the Soda Nerds, uh, the show where everybody is nerdy about something, and it is fun to be a kid, even if you aren't one. And we are in a different setting tonight. Get ready, everybody. It's a cool 50 degrees outside, and you can see my breath. And we are out here at the Dead End Hayride in Wyoming, Minnesota, with the owner himself, Jeremy Hastings. How's it going tonight, guys? Welcome to the show, Jeremy. I'm glad to be here. Hey, I'm really glad you carved out the time to make it happen. You're a busy dude. We've been trying to get this going, and I'm just, from all of us, we got the peanut gallery with the cameras back here recording everything. Just a big thanks for no, this is great. having us come out this here. This is great. Um, we just want to talk to you, right? So the premise of our show, Soda Nerds, here is everybody's nerdy about something. Absolutely. And we're, it's a hunch that you're nerdy about Halloween, scary shit, this spooky season time of year. Is that, am I far off? Yeah, yeah. Your your radar is tuned into the nerd. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, definitely nerdy about putting on awesome shows, um, yeah. having people come on out, have a great time. I mean, who doesn't love fall yeah, in the Midwest, for sure. right? This for is sure. great. This is great. It's the best time of year. And we are at your business, again, the Dead End Hayride. And uh, we're going to dive into it a little bit just because I want to get to know you a little more. I want to get to know this business you got a little more but for the people that don't know and i'm going to urge everybody listening to the podcast version of this swing over to our youtube channel soda nerds on youtube because we are out here at the dead end hayride and it is quite the setting and we'd love for you to get the visual picture of it as well rather than just listening to it but for the listeners can you just give a quick you got people rolling in here right now you guys are open yeah there's people hopping on hayrides for somebody who has no idea what the dead end hayride is if they're coming tonight they purchase a ticket Walk us through just a little bit about what they're going to experience. So the best part of the Dead End Hayride is that we're kind of out in the sticks, right? If you're from the city, maybe you're from the suburbs, you're driving for a little ways. You're like, am I even in the right spot? I mean, my GPS has taken me, you know, down this dirt road. And then you kind of come into our parking lot and you're like, okay, there's a lot of cars here. That's that's cool. But you don't really know which way it is back to home. And the setting is great. We're out we're out here, way away from the city lights, and that's kind of the backdrop of the Dead End Hayride. But you get out of your car, you come in, we've got all sorts of photo ops, all sorts of spooky lighting. The atmosphere is great. We got the bonfires going. You got some food from the food trucks, and then you get on the ride. And we take you way out into the woods, about 15 minutes out, and we drop you off. <laughs> and um, and that's the first part of the attraction. Yeah. You still got two more left, and then you spend the next uh, forty-five minutes kind of finding your way back. I love it to uh, <laughs> to the rest of the Dead and Hayride up here. So yeah. So okay. So a Hayride is a portion of it, correct? And then you got to do some walking. You got to do some walking. What might people experience on this cool, brisk evening walk? No, you go through a prison. You go through cemetery right the catacombs you find some unsavory uh characters at the voodoo hut and and the tank scene and the military base there's a helicopter out there yeah. that you go through yeah. the the clown barn if clowns aren't your thing you can skip that no you can't you're, <laughs> you got them you, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna find them they're gonna find you um, and then what is a haunted house without chainsaws right absolutely there might be 15 or so chainsaws out there. there there's quite a few there's quite yeah. a few yeah so for sure and again those of you listening hop over to youtube uh you're probably going to hear some background noise throughout this because you got a lively 
business here, right? There's people oh, yeah. coming there- in and out. And and even the people that, I mean, before you hop on the hayride, it's an experience in itself, right? You got Absolutely. A, you got a whole bunch of stuff here for people to do. We were just checking out some 8x8 murals that you just showed me that uh, you said some local artists were coming in to do those? Yeah, we hire muralists to come in each weekend and, and paint murals, street art. Um, we love it. it. It adds decoration to the farm, and, and people people love seeing people who are good at their craft, yeah, right? for sure. So... For sure. Yeah, so I, I've i been coming to the Dead End Hayride. Man, what, what year did you start it? 2010. 2010. 2010. Yeah, so I've been coming almost every year since you... That's awesome. Since you opened up. That's awesome. Did you ever... I mean, I'm trying to remember, once upon a time, it used to be just a hayride, didn't it? Or have you always had the haunted houses to walk through? We've always had some form of haunted houses yeah. to walk through, but we've definitely added... And made the attraction longer. I think the whole attraction probably lasted 30 minutes, maybe. Yeah. Uh, the first year, and now it's like 50, almost 60 minutes to get through the whole thing. For sure, and it's uh, well worth it. <laughs> no, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's yeah, a lot I, of fun. I will say, definitely coming. I mean, I was I was in high school when I, when you guys first opened up, and every single year uh, I've come and I've told everybody year in and year out that it's from from the minute you step in, like it's an experience, even. Even I understand, okay. I, if if a fast pass is your thing, people watching and listening, okay, pay the upcharge for a fast pass, you can Absolutely. get in, right? But I will say, for me personally, standing in line is it, a part of the experience. It's absolutely as well. part of it. It's absolutely part of it. Yeah. So I, I've I've never been not entertained from from the minute that I walk in here, where it really is. You've put together quite the show where people can have fun from the moment they step out of their car. Absolutely. Grab grab a big group of people. You know, make sure there's some really scaredy cats in the group because that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but grab a big group of people. Come on out to the hayride. You'll you'll be talking about it for the next month. Absolutely. It'll be great. So with a production as big as you have, I mean, you're you're in the entertainment business, right? Yep. So it, it's it's really how can we get better? Year in, year out. Absolutely. How can we improve this entertainment, the service that we're providing to people? But there's a lot that goes into production value 365 days a year yeah absolutely so can you tell us uh, just like the people that come to the dead end hayride right it's september through the end of october it's a short period of the year for the people that look forward to it right but you're doing this year round like just describe a little bit of the production value that behind the scenes goes into making this happen i just looked today we're sitting at think 382 employees i mean it's it, it's a beast it's a beast um you know and that's everything from people working in the parking lot to help make sure that you get parked efficiently yeah. to security staff to ticket sellers ticket takers um tractor drivers people to punch tickets and to tend lines at the front and then you've got all the actors and i think we've got nine makeup artists this year uh people in costuming department it's it's a it's incredible how big it's gotten over yeah, the years. Absolutely. And I mean, even talking about your just makeup artists, like somebody behind the scenes, how do you even choose the right people? Like, what are you looking for? I mean, as the owner of this place, like, I, like what is going through your mind where you're like, I got to find somebody who can do X, Y, Z. You know, people find us a lot of times. Yeah. So we've got a pretty big footprint now. And, and we get a lot of talented people that, you know, will start out as fans or customers. Yeah. And then they'll reach out. They're like, I, I want to I be part of this. I want to do this. And a lot of times people will start out as actors or makeup artists. And then if they've, if they've really got, like, some unique talents and, and they're, they're into it, we might have them kind of start working part-time before the season or, or whatnot. And then they might end up you know, finding a spot on our full time team because there's there's eight of us that work on this year round. Yeah, um, fifty two weeks a year. And what are you eight doing? To to like you're obviously staying busy. Yeah, yeah. One of the best parts about working at the Dead and Hayride is it's not the same thing yeah. day after day after day after day. Amen. Amen. If anybody you know, can get a job like that, do that. Yeah, absolutely. So it's right about this time you're sick and tired of whatever you're working on. We're wrapping that up and we're on to the next thing. Yeah. And so directly like following the season, we'll tear down a bunch of the show. 
We'll take stuff down that's going to get damaged by winter. We'll put away all the all the props that we don't want to be out in the weather. We'll pack those away, and we'll start servicing any equipment that needs to be serviced. Foggers get cleaned. Uh, lights get cleaned. Stuff gets repaired. Extension cords get wrapped up and repaired. Um, and then all of our tractors come in the shop, and we do service on all of those. And then we'll start building new stuff. And yeah. so... I mean, winter is a long time up here. It's it's frozen for months at a time. So it's like, what can we work on to keep our eight full-time staff yeah. busy in the shop all winter long? Because I think that part of the Dead End Hayride success is becoming professionals at what we do. Yeah. Right? If you're if you're a part-time haunted house or a part-time haunted hayride and you you just have part-time staff that come in during the spring and summer and help you build, I don't know if you can completely become a mega attraction. Mm -hmm. And so we we decided early on that we were gonna have full-time employees and we were gonna work on this thing year round. And so we've got a pretty big shop and we've invested in a lot of tools. And so we'll we'll build photo ops during, during the winter. We'll yeah. start placing orders for new merch. We'll, we'll start placing orders for new props. We'll start designing new sets. We'll paint old sets or paint old props um, and get them all brought back to life. Yeah. But um, right about the time that we're getting really sick of working in the shop, man, it's springtime. And springtime, we always go to our industry's trade show. Our industry's trade show is usually in March, and it's it's held down in St. Louis, Missouri, and it's kind of just a rite of passage that anybody in the Halloween haunted house industry, you go to the Trans World Trade Show, um, the Halloween Haunt Show. It's in March, it's in, down in St. Louis. And if you're tired after the season and and you're not quite feeling the Halloween spirit. That'll, that'll get the juices going. That'll change everything, <laughs> right? You'll yeah. come back from the trade show and you'll be like, okay, you guys, we're, we're let's doing do this. this. Let's yeah. do this. We just spent a bunch of money. We just bought a ton <laughs> of cool props. We just bought costumes and masks. Yeah. And we bought all this all this latex and we bought makeup and we bought all this cool stuff. Let's, let's get to work. And, um, and then we'll usually start tearing down some of our old sets. We'll decide yeah. what set is going to get the, the chopping block and we'll, we'll tear that out and we'll start building the new set. So how do you, okay. So you have a team of, of eight full-time employees and I'm assuming those eight make a lot of the decisions of what the next season Absolutely. is going to look like from season to season. Um, how do you how do you go about that? Is it hey we're gonna cut this set we're gonna add this set who's who's calling that shot? Is it all eight it, of you? Is it a majority vote or is it Jeremy's like no we're doing this? No no it's kind of a it's time of kind of a group effort. It's pretty apparent what sets we're gonna take yeah. out. It um you know we'll have a thousand conversations about oh we should tear out such and such set or. Oh, we really need to work on the haunted cornfield this year because we we did a ton of work in the hayride and we did a ton of work in the walkthrough. We got to do something big in the cornfield this year, and so we're always kind of bouncing around. This year we put a lot of effort into the hayride. The hayride got a couple new sets. We okay. actually changed part of the hayride, and so we're not going to put that much effort into the actual hayride portion next year. But man, the walkthrough. The walkthrough, it's been a couple of years since yeah. we put something big in there. So we'll probably focus on the walkthrough or what, maybe the cornfield next year. What's probably year. the biggest, the latest biggest thing you've done in the walkthrough? Uh, the prison. The, the prison, prison got put in. Uh, the prison kind of took two years to work on. We we put the prison in in 20, 2020 and 2021. Um, the military base went in in 2022. We're still not completely done with the military base. We're going to be adding some more to that next year um otherwise we got a couple other ideas of stuff that we want to add for next year yeah for sure okay so i'm gonna ask it because i'm just curious but you go down to this trade so you buy new stuff for the next upcoming season you're obviously getting jazzed up you're yep. a halloween guy like me I, it's like a kid in a candy store probably walking through that but they're big ticket items oh right? yeah oh so, yeah like what's what's probably the biggest coin you've dropped 
on an item sitting out here at the dead end hayride? Oh, we, the helicopter, probably the helicopter. Yeah, so you have like, an actual full size helicopter. Yeah, it's an old military helicopter. Um, it's, I don't, I don't even know. It's like sixty feet long. The thing is huge. Yeah. Um, but I, that was kind of a, a nut up or shut up sort of event because <laughs> yeah. I'd been talking yeah. for years. I want a giant airplane fuselage. And then I also want, I wanted a helicopter and, and I told people, you know, Hey, if you ever come across a helicopter fuselage, you know, call me, call me, yeah. send it to me, text it to me, email it to me, send me smoke signals, whatever. And I'll buy it. And, and I said it enough times that eventually I found a helicopter <laughs> and I couldn't not buy it because yeah. I'd been talking such yeah. big shit for so long that the helicopter came up. We had to buy it. And the helicopter wasn't crazy expensive. It was shipping it because yeah. it was down in Texas. This thing is 60 feet long. It's 17 feet wide. It's like <laughs> 11 and a half feet tall. And um, and so it cost like 20 grand to get it shipped up just here. Just to ship it. Just to ship it up here. But it's but it's worth it because who else has a, a full-size helicopter that you walk through in their haunted house? No kidding. UPS looks at the right. sheet for the day and it's like, <laughs> the fuck are we yeah. we're moving a helicopter? <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Okay. So cool, and we actually did do a walkthrough. Soda nerds, you were kind enough to let us come through here during the day. So yeah, that was we, great. Yeah, we we saw some pretty cool stuff. Um, so you said over almost four hundred employees. Yeah, that you have here, and everybody's got a different, unique role, right? Absolutely. From the second you pull up, I mean, you got a massive parking lot that's always busy. You got people directing traffic. You got people running tickets. You got people working in food booths, and then you got actors out in the hayride and out in the field. What is kind of like behind the scenes your casting process or your hiring process? Like, like when do you guys kind of start that, right? Because September and October are always coming. And then Absolutely. what are kind of the steps that you got to go through to either become an actor or an employee here at the Dead End Here, right? So we start hiring in mid August. Yeah. Um, we put out a casting call to all of our former employees. We say, hey, your former employee, you get first dibs at at the roles, we want you to come on out and uh, and show your interest. And so we get all of our former employees that, that want to come back um, and play their, their roles from last year to come on out and sign up. And then we kind of know where we're at. We usually retain about 65% of our employees year to year. So we only need to hire, you know, 100 or so people. Yeah. And then we'll, then we'll start running Facebook ads, Instagram, TikTok ads to, to get the word out, you know, that the Dead and Hayride is hiring and uh, we got links on our website where it's like, we constantly are having people like fill out those links and, and send their information in. Um, and people send in their information in May. And, yeah. and then come August, we'll be reaching out to them. Hey, you know, we're hiring. We've got, you know, 15 hiring events coming up. You know, we just need you to come out and show up to one of them. And then we'll do, we'll do some interviewing. We'll, uh, we'll get their availability and um, they'll go through... They'll go through an audition, and what we're really looking for is somebody who can come out of their shell, somebody yeah. who's got energy, somebody who can act. Yeah, ab absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. So. Yeah, for sure. Okay, and and I do you have like so a hundred people is a lot of new people. Oh, right? absolutely. Like I, know, like I know. Um, you said people keep sending stuff in to try and become an employee. I'm assuming you got to run some big sort of welcome onto the team or. Do you have you ever had like a the new pe the rookies are coming? Yep. And the vets are we're dressing up. We're gonna scare the shit out of them <laughs> as they come in. As, we should be doing that. Yeah, yeah. We should be doing that. Yeah, that you gotta get on that. That'd be fun. No, I, we run a we run a dress rehearsal and an orientation. Orientation is all the boring HR stuff, but we got to do it right. Yeah. You can sure. you can do this. You can't do that. Um, show up for your shift. Uh, Call your call your supervisor, all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, and um, and then we do a dress rehearsal where we get everybody in costume, get everybody in makeup. We we start sending wagons through the trail, we start sending people through the the walkthroughs, and everybody kind of starts to fall into their characters. So you're right? doing like full run throughs before absolutely guests are even showing up. Absolutely. Yeah. That's I want to come to a run through. No, no, <laughs> come come like opening night. Don't come through to no. the run throughs. <laughs> no. Uh, I yeah I I have 
I've, I've probably come to all. Opening night, closing <laughs> night, I've been here. The run through's the one that I haven't done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay, so um, I, I think... I think there's, um, you said that you go around to different haunted attractions. Like we've talked about that. Absolutely. When we were here before. And that's what you guys are kind of doing in the off season. Like how much from, you have the trade show, but then you have these other attractions that you go to. Like, is it you're pulling from these other attractions, then going to the trade show and finding stuff or... Like what? What is the percentage of new stuff here at the Dead End Hayride? Like, where is it coming from? Oh man, there's like, there's almost no way to describe. Like, we are going anywhere and everywhere yeah. to find some amount of inspiration. Um, I can remember uh, a conversation that we had a couple of years ago, where um, one of my team members, one of my full time staff, was like, "Hey, you guys, let's go to the Franconia Art." art uh exhibit you know it's just outside of taylor's falls minnesota and um and they do some kind of cool outdoor sculptures and outdoor art and it's like let's just take a field trip yeah uh one day and see if we get inspired by something we see there and sure enough like something we saw there inspired us to come back yeah and build part of a set (laughs) <laughs> and it was it was super cool. It was super cool. Like yeah. one part in the in the cannibal scene out on the hayride was completely inspired by going to an outdoor art exhibit in Taylor's Falls, Minnesota. And you never know where inspiration is going to come from. So we go everywhere we possibly can to hopefully get some yeah. sort of idea for the next unique thing that we want to do out here. What's probably. Uh what what is if you can think of it a staple of the dead end hayride that was maybe drawn up from inspiration of seeing something else oh i i know exactly i know exactly what so early on early 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 dead end hayride like 2000 2010 yeah right you know it wasn't even called the dead end hayride at that time and a haunted house that you know we all really looked up to was down in new orleans Louisiana, and it's called the House of Shock. It's no more. Um, it was sold and the name changed, but it was called the House of Shock Horror Show, started by um, a handful of friends, one of which uh, was a member of the band Pantera. Oh, nice. And um, one of the guys at the House of Shock, uh, Steve J, he shoots pyro for a living. You know, okay. that's his day job. Yeah. And he was one of the owners of House of Shock. And I can remember being in a trade show seminar that Steve J was putting on and it was like how to bring excitement to your haunted attraction. Yeah. And he was talking about pyro, you know, um, both pyrotechnics and fire effects. And I was just like in awe. This was like, we've heard so much about the house of shock. It was the most extreme haunted house in the country. And it's just like, holy cow, we are in the presence of greatness. This is so cool. And, you know, went up and started talking to Steve J after the seminar. And Steve J, one of the nicest guys ever, um, you know, he's like, hey, next time I'm next time I'm in Minneapolis, you know, with a band or whatever, uh, come down and, and shoot pyro with us. It'll be cool. And and we learned a ton about building uh, building flame units and whatnot out there. Uh, talking with Steve J, and now that's kind of a staple of the Dead and Hayride. We got fire, yeah, in the show, and and people love it. People come out to out to see the pyro, pyro and and see the fire, and yeah. um, the people and might even hear it on this podcast. Ab- absolutely, you, you might be able to hear that. Absolutely, pop. yeah. And 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 that all came from sitting in a seminar at the trade show, meeting you know a veteran in the entertainment industry, yeah, that shoots pyro from everybody from Rob Zombie to Beyonce. Oh, that's awesome. So just getting jazzed about flames. Yeah, for for sure. So there's, okay, so obviously there's a ton of elements, Pyro being one of them. We talked with some of your staff, right? And Soda Nerds, everybody's nerdy about something. Absolutely. They're like, okay, yeah, Jeremy owns that end here, right? That's just just massive attraction. But Jeremy's really nerdy about lumens. Okay. Yeah. Dude, that's what we heard is Jeremy Hastings likes his lights. 
I, I like flashlights. I like flashlights. Yeah. Do I've you, probably loved and lost more flashlights than than most people have do you, ever. Do you collect flat? Do you have certain flashlights for certain jobs? It. I'm. I'm kind of like. Um, what is it? Andy in Toy Story, where like, or like Sid in Toy Story, where it's like you get a new one, and then the the previous one is dead, <laughs> so you just, never play yeah. with it again. Yeah. Like, like that's kind of that's kind of me, where I've got kind of a problem. Just like, the drawer full of sad old. Yeah, flashlights. sad flashlights that never get played with. Never get charged up. Their yeah. batteries are all dead and sad, right? I thought about that right when we got here, and we we walked back to your shop, and I saw you and Brad. You each got the the headlamps. I'm like, yeah. just Jeremy and his lumens. Yeah, he's just, he's gotta have the <laughs> the good flashlight on hand. Oh, that's awesome. Um, okay, so right now, your season, you when you started out, did you start in September or was it just the month of October? You know, I don't even remember how many days we were open that first year but it was yeah. it was probably just friday saturdays right yeah so we were probably open i do for a remember total, that yeah yeah we were probably open for a total of i don't know maybe like 12 days it was probably like four weekends or something like that so when did you kind of when did it hit you that it was like this is something right like we're this is growing and this was there a moment or was it just kind of a progression or was there that moment where it was like We've got something here. No, no. Like the first year, we did great. You know, yeah. we had like nine thousand some people come out. It was it was awesome. But year two, year two, twenty eleven, it was like when Groupon was just taking off. Yeah. And I can remember, I can remember we we signed up for a couple different. You know, they were called like daily deal sites at that time. And we signed up for a couple daily deal sites and they started selling and they kept on selling and they kept on selling. And yeah. I remember after the first weekend, you know, let's let's say year one of the Dead End Hayride, let's say we did 250 people opening Friday or whatever. Yeah. Well, after we did that daily deal and on multiple different websites, we had like 500 people the first opening day yeah and geez. it's like wait guys um if we project this out to like what we did like third and fourth weekend yeah uh we're gonna have way too many people out here yeah and so i remember being in the back of the shop at like three in the morning rebuilding our hay wagons to make them like twice as long to hold <laughs> twice as many people and it's just like it's a good thing we did that yeah. because it it absolutely the crowds showed up and it was wild but that was that year two was huge growing pains because going from like nine thousand people to like twenty thousand people yeah that was a Jeez. that was a gigantic yeah. gigantic like shift in in how we had to operate because yeah you know putting nine thousand people through uh, over the period of like 12 days um looking back that's so that's so funny but um but yeah, that was absolutely doable, right? We had like four hay rides, and and they sat like probably twenty people each. Yeah, and we're like, this isn't gonna cut it, guys. We <laughs> need, we can see the the storm of people coming, and yeah. uh, and it wasn't gonna cut it. So, but we adapted, and uh, you know, well, it's a good problem to have, right? You absolutely, du you double in size is a good problem to have, but then it's also right, like those growing pains. All right, we gotta. <laughs> we, we, we gotta figure out how to handle this, you know. So it it's only it's only continued to grow, right? So year one, you bring in nine thousand people. How many actors did you have uh, we, out in the field? We probably had like thirty five actors, yeah. if that. We had one makeup artist. Yeah. We if we had thirty five actors, we had like thirty six costumes, right? Yep. Um, there were no extra costumes, and and now we've got, you know. 200 actors and nine makeup artists it's it's crazy how big it's gotten it's yeah. absolutely insane no kidding and and it continues to get bigger we talked about this a little bit because you constantly pour back in to the production value of what you have going on right it's not if you're coming to the hayride you're in you're out like i do right myself faithful attendee here there's something new for you every single time every single year and how much I mean, how much importance do you, do you put on putting back into this? Not just being complacent with what you have, 
right? Because you could because you could stop right now, and, and you have a huge successful a- a- business. Absolutely, people are still going to come. But you know? you're just coasting at that point. Yeah. You're you're coasting, and and you will, you know, you will eventually come to a stop if you stop. If you stop putting your foot on the accelerator, you will come to a stop at some point. And and we're that's not the type of team that we are. We want to see how how good of a show we can put on. Yeah. And so we're just keeping our foot on the accelerator. It's 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 incredibly important to keep pouring it back into the show. Um, because the customers will absolutely notice if you don't. Yeah, for sure. So I mean, obviously you don't have to throw percentages here, but from what you take in. Big, small, like what are you putting back into this? It, it's scary. It's scary to see the checkbook at, um, <laughs> at opening, opening weekend. Yeah. Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty terrifying. A lot of times it's it's in the negative uh, during <laughs> opening weekend. So it's it's nearly it's nearly everything. Yeah. Uh, you know we've got eight full time employees and and they have to they have to make a wage right. Yeah. Um, but it's we're pouring everything back into it yeah um you know we we don't drive big fancy cars we don't have super fancy houses but we've got a kick-ass haunted house yeah absolutely yeah it reminds me of i mean i don't know if you know the who mr beast is yeah on youtube yeah he talks all the time about how it's like i don't i don't live a fabulous lifestyle i literally pour every dollar i make back into my business yeah you know and and what a way to do it i mean it keeps it fun too right like you're not only for you, but the people that you have coming here, but especially for your team where it's like, we're not just coasting. We're not right. maintaining. We're not doing the same thing. We're constantly innovating, constantly innovating. You know, Ab- Absolutely. I don't think that we'd have the team that we have out here at the Dead and Hayride if we started, if we started like saying, ah, you know what? I don't know if we need that new projector. Yeah. I don't know if we really need to do that many photo ops. I don't know if we need to put in a stage this year. No, I I, I think that people will find other opportunities to that are exciting and 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 have big thinkers behind them. So, have you ever had like a a fan or an attendee inspired set or You've come across a comment where somebody was like, hey, you guys should be, you should do something like this. And your team's like, that's a good idea. You know, every so often there's a, there's a really good idea that comes out. Um, most of the ideas that people throw out are like, you know what you should do? <laughs> you should put somebody on the hayride that's actually an actor and then rip them off. And you're like, wow, that is a really unique idea. Um, but no, every once in a while, like an idea comes yeah. across where it's like, that, that, holy cow, that is a really, really stinking good idea. That would be a cool idea to have somebody on the hay ride and then Shut rip them up. up. <laughs> you can leave now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, boy. No, I, I, I think it's sweet. I, so how many, I mean, has anything ever come across where you're just like, how do you deal owning a business like this? It's not all sunshine and rainbows. No. Come, come, coming from me, it is, because yeah. I absolutely love this place. Absolutely. But everybody that's successful has critics, right? Yeah. I, I can almost guarantee this place has critics as well. Like, what are some things that you've had to deal with or some hoops from people or even maybe, like, legal issues of stuff popping up or, you know what I mean? Yes. Knock on wood. No, um, no legal issues. No, it's, like, there's good days and there's bad days, right? It's um, leading up to leading up to opening day. It is it tensions are high, stress levels are are yeah. high, um, sleep is at a rock bottom. Deprived. Yeah, yeah. And so like so like with any family, you fight. Any family has you know um, has skirmishes and whatnot. But um, you know it's it's pretty incredible once opening once opening night happens and the customers are coming in and people are showing up and they're having a good time it's incredibly rewarding to see yeah. so many people come through and they say oh my god we look forward to coming out to the dead end hayride we come every year we bring we bring our friends from out of state here this is this is the highlight of our of our year um it, that's incredibly incredibly rewarding and it and it kind of helps us through those through those dark days yeah. But there's yeah, it's not all it's not all sunshine and rainbows. It's um 
it's it's real work. It um, it may be fun. It may be keeps us on our toes, but it's it's absolutely real work. Yeah, because I mean, even the family dynamic. Like you're obviously you're married. You have yep. a family. Yep. Uh, how was that as this continued to blow up and grow? You know, I've got I've got a really great wife. She she grew up in an entrepreneurial family, so her yeah. dad her dad's an entrepreneur and and um and started his own business so she she gets it she gets it like you don't build you don't build something you don't build an empire nine to five right that that just doesn't happen you know if if you're trying to build something special it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of time a lot of sacrifices a lot of dedication and she's incredibly incredibly supported um she's also our longest unpaid employee she's (laughs) she's uh we met we met in uh in year I think year two of the dead end hayride, and yeah. um, I don't think she's gotten a paycheck a single a single year, but uh, but she keeps showing up and yeah, so it's yeah. great. You gotta cut that check, man. It's a tax break. I know. Right? I you know. Get her on the payroll. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's obviously you have to have a supportive partner, right? If At, you're if you're gonna take yeah, something like this on, hundred percent. And when we and when we started dating. You know, I was I was working my full time day job. I was yeah. also a volunteer firefighter, and and when it came time to like, I just couldn't take it anymore. I yeah. could not work a full time job and run the dead end hayride. She had my back, and she's like, you know what? If if we need to go for a period of time just on my income, yeah, because because the business is is trying to take off and grow. You know we can do that and that was the that was exactly what i needed to be able to take that leap of faith and quit my day job and and go full time with yeah. this crazy business well and that's i i mean it's good you bring that up because obviously i'm the dead end hayride guy where maybe somebody listening or watching has never been here before um kind of backtracking a little bit but I, what even sparked the idea how did this even come about like you know it's, where you're working a day job and then it's like you know what? I think I'm just gonna go start a haunted attraction, and we're gonna do that now. No, it's not that crazy. It's not <laughs> that crazy. So my, we're on. We're sitting on Pine Haven Farm. It's yeah. it's my family's farm. My grandparents bought the place in 1950, and and they didn't. They were city kids. They didn't really know what they were gonna do, and and it turned into a Christmas tree farm kind of yeah. on accident, and uh, <laughs> settled down, <laughs> and uh, we. We started growing pumpkins like 30 years ago, and so yeah. we we had this pumpkin patch that we were doing, and we actually we were approached by an owner of a haunted hayride that lost the property that they were operating their haunted hayride oh, on. Okay, and so this was seven years before the dead end hayride, and so uh, my family leased the property to um, it was called Nightmare at Pine Haven. Okay, and. And they ran here for seven years. After seven years, couldn't really come to a mutually beneficial agreement, and and they moved their attraction um, elsewhere. And and around that exact same time, you know, I was I don't know, I was probably twenty at the time. You know, when they when they first showed up, uh, I was probably like fourteen, fifteen, and then, you know, after seven years, I was you know eighteen, nineteen, whatever. Yeah, and. And I subscribed to a magazine, right? And this magazine was called Haunt World Magazine. And it's for owners and operators and haunted house enthusiasts. Yeah. And so it comes out like three or four times a year. And, and it features a new haunted house in every episode. And the first issue that I got, I signed up for a one-year subscription. And the first issue that I got smack dab on the cover is the name of this attraction called Spooky Woods. And Spooky Woods is in North Carolina. And I'm paging through the the magazine and I'm reading about how they're building these big oversized facades and how and the story of Spooky Woods and the owner Tony and his wife Donna run this attraction in in North Carolina. And and I'm just inspired, you know, it's like a good book. You yeah. just can't put it down. Yep. And and I decide I see so many parallels between Spooky Woods <laughs> And my own situation, you know, Spooky Woods has a pumpkin patch. The setting to Spooky Woods is an old Christmas tree farm. Yeah. I'm like, man, I got to see this place. And it, I could tell that it was a really big production. Yeah. And so 
I did a little research. I found out um, the owner's phone number. I, I called him and I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm so-and-so. I want to come out there and see your attraction. And he's like, yeah, man, come on out. Uh, give me a call when you get in town. And so I, I booked a plane ticket out there and um, got a rental car and drove to Spooky Woods. And I showed up and he's like, who, who are you again now? <laughs> um, and, you know, you, yeah. meet, you meet certain people in your life and it only takes like five minutes and you're instantly friends, right? Yeah. And, and Tony and Donna are those type of people. You know, I was full of questions. They were full of answers. I stayed with them for like two days. And, and by the time that our time in North Carolina was done, I was like, man, I can do this. I can do this. I can bring a high production, you know, high capacity, really high end haunted house back to Minnesota. Because at the time, Minnesota didn't have anything like that. Yeah. And so I was all inspired. I came back and started sketching stuff down on on notepads and trying to come up with a name for the attraction yeah and writing down all these goals and you know 15 16 years later here we are yeah so it's i mean we're on your parents farm you said yep so uh, who'd you go to first where it was i mean you're coming back you're all jazzed up yeah it's like i want to do this like what conversation did you have and with who you know i really really had to convince my parents (laughs) that that i could do this um, obviously, they saw they saw a certain amount of the success of, of Nightmare at Pine Haven. Yeah. And so when when kind of the negotiations broke down with the ownership of Nightmare at Pine Haven, um, you know, I'm like, man, it's it's do or die this this year, right? And so I sold my sports car. I was working as a machinist. You know, convinced a couple friends to to give me a hand building some sets on the nights and weekends and on an absolutely just bare bones budget we put together the first year yeah. of the dead end hayride and i guess the rest is history success yeah yeah that is awesome so you've had continued growth since 2010 what does growth look like moving forward have you ever been approached about expansion of this place you know i've i've had a couple people reach out and be like oh would you like to be in a partnership with yeah and and put in another another haunted house and man it just it's never seemed like the right time or the right group or whatnot the the hard part with haunted houses and we've we've seen them come and we've seen them go haunted houses are not a get rich quick scheme they're a lot of work and they're a lot of work up front. Yeah. And so if somebody's not really willing to put in just an absolute massive amount of work, it it's always just going to be a flash in the pan. And it's, you know, a successful haunt is purely just a byproduct of doing the absolute best job that you possibly can. Yeah. And... And so you got to just pour everything you got into it. Have you personally ever had the inkling or the aspiration to go bigger? Or is it kind of, I just want to keep pouring into this location and making this better? You know, times, times change. I've thought about doing like other locations or whatnot. But, you know, the Dead End Hayride has so much momentum behind it. And then, you know, we visit, we visit other attractions in in all over the country and it's like man let's see how big we can get the dead end hayride let's see yeah. how big we can get it because we've got a great location here this is really really cool it's cool that it's on a dead end road it's cool <laughs> yeah you know that it's we've fitting. got we've <laughs> yeah we've got space to stretch our legs um we've got we've got the pumpkin patch is an awesome backdrop to to running a halloween event yeah. So there's there's a lot of there's a lot of things that work really really well about the Dead End Hayride because it's right here. Yeah. Is that is the Dead End Road how you got the name Dead End Hayride? No, it was actually like it was actually on the back of like a movie. I don't even know what movie it is. Um, my buddy and like my first full time employee Brent um, could tell you way more about like because it was it was his uh, it was his idea for. He's like, what do you think about the Dead End? Or the dead end hayride, and I'm like, I don't know. I kind of like, like 
super scary fear world or wh- whatever whatever name <laughs> I was Spooky Woods right, 2.0 right whatever <laughs> yeah. whatever name I had come up with that I had scratched down like um but uh but the Dead and Hayride like stuck and it uh yeah. it started to grow on all of us yeah i mean it's certainly i mean it's a it's a well known name now for yeah. sure how like have you guys ever had anybody out here that's like ranked you as uh, you know in Ab- comparison with other yeah. attractions yeah Ab- absolutely and and most of the haunted house ranking like articles that you read most of them are bogus like there's very very few people that go around and visit all these haunted houses that they write articles about but there are a couple there are a couple i um i don't remember off the top of my head what the specific name of them are but yeah we've had several people come through and rank us really highly within yeah like the top three or four haunted hay rides in the country yeah that's so. that's awesome what's like i don't even know some names of the other big ones there's there's some every big major market has a really big haunted house yeah so there's a there's a monster haunted house down in atlanta georgia called netherworld super super cool there's um there's a absolutely fantastic haunted house in um baton rouge louisiana called the 13th gate um down in st louis there's there's a couple really big ones the darkness and creepy world um, some of our favorites are in the Chicago and Detroit area. Yeah. Um, but there's there's big haunted houses all over the place, um, and it's just a ton of fun to go to them. Cause, yeah. Because they're all every every haunted house is owned by an artist, and they just they pour themselves into it. For sure. And uh, and it's cool to see what people can create. Absolutely. And for those of you listening and watching, uh, if you know of any of those names, I know now you know. Like the Dead End Hayride is playing with the top dogs here, right? Absolutely. Like we're, yeah, we're we're eating at the first class table. So <laughs> up up at the Dead End Hayride. Um, how about um, community involvement as you've gotten bigger, right? Yeah. Is there anything that you're doing in the off season? Because we're in we're in rural, you know, yeah. East Central Minnesota. Yep. What What are you guys trying to do to better this place outside of this property you know you know it's it's rather it's rather interesting conversation um i think the biggest impact that we have on our local community is through our employees yeah um man we've got such a diverse group of employees and and some some kids come to us and this is their very first job they've never had another job before And and the Dead and Hay Rides their first job. How do you um, top it? You you can't top it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how you do that. Yeah. But um, I, I think that's the biggest impact that we have is through teaching the young people what it what it means to what it means to show up to a job and be be proud of the job that you Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so. What okay? So what would you say to any of those young people aspiring the entrepreneur mind? Right. You've you've dealt with the grind for years yep. now, yep. <clears throat> and you dealt with what we call just the dog shit trenches days yep. back back in the early days. It's a lot of work. How much work are we talking? Qu- like quantitated in in hours for somebody. Like a week. What were you putting in when you first started out? All of it. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> the whole like, week. The the every every inch of spare time. Yeah. Um, so I mean, if you've got if you've got something you're going for, man, don't let anybody stop you. Just just go for it. Yeah. Um, get get mentors. Get mentors. Get people you look up to. Talk to them. Reach out to them. You know, anybody who's where you want to be is willing to talk to you. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, reach out. Talk to them. You know, go and go and volunteer with somebody. Be their apprentice. Do do whatever you have to. Yeah. to get a mentor, to get mentors, to get lots of mentors. Um, and don't take your foot off the gas. For sure. And what, a, I mean, outside of mentors, what a, what does friend life look like? You know what I mean? Like, you, you got friendships. Who do you need to surround yourself with there to be building something like this? Not, oh. the, not these slums holding <laughs> the camera. <laughs> no, um, like... I'm just kidding. Friend, I love you both. Friendships... Friendship's good. 
uh, on the haunted house side of things, the the business is kind of all consuming. It's yeah. it's hard to have relationships outside o- outside of, of it. Yep. Outside of it, just because it's like, okay, Jeremy, we get it. You're in the haunted <laughs> house business. How about you talk about something other than Halloween and yeah. haunted house? Um, but no, it's it, it's incredible. We we put a ton of effort in out here, and and you, it doesn't matter who they are, they're going to be your friends by the end of end of the season. Yeah. Because you just spend so much time together and you have so many shared experiences at that point. Yeah, for sure. I, 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 I couldn't agree more that it's surround yourself with the people that love the same thing and yeah. you're probably going to go far. Right. For sure. And it's obviously bouncing ideas off of each other too, right? You know, I, I doubt everything that's happened here was like, all right, we're going to sit down today on a Tuesday from, you know, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and this is what we're gonna plan out. I bet some of the greatest stuff here has probably come from, you, you know, what I was just thinking about, or spitball, or this Absolutely. or that. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's a thousand of those uh, conversations that happen every day out here. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, we're constantly throwing out ideas at each other, and some of those ideas stick, and we keep we keep talking about them and we keep talking about them and then we talk about them with this person over here and we we rope in that person over there and we talk about it yeah. to them Snowball and then it. we yep. and then we end up you know putting pencil on paper or mouse on on pixels and yeah. and we build it yeah for sure speaking i mean speaking of the attractions right as you're building stuff and you're coming up with new stuff What's probably your top favorite attraction that you do have here, right? Sets or scene or, you know, that's a good, that's a good. I actually love the hayride. Okay. No, I love the hayride. I well, the, it, the hayride itself goes through a bunch of different scenes. So, right. Yeah. Right. But as a whole, I love the idea of the hayride. I it's such a different dynamic than the walkthrough because you're it's a shared it's a shared experience with all you know, 40 other people on the hayride. And so the hayride you're going through as a community of people, and all you need is just a couple people who are scared and animated on on the wagon with you and it'll it'll be an absolute just blast. So bring a woman. Yep. Bring somebody (laughs) scared. Um and you will have a great, great time on yeah. the hayride. Yeah, for sure. I've I always noticed that growing up as my wife who would keep her keep her head down. Yeah. And anybody <laughs> who would jump on, I'd, I'd be like, hey, don't worry, they're gone. They'd yeah. be <laughs> standing right there when she opened up her eyes again. Yeah, that's awesome. So haunted attraction, right? You're yep. you're in the spooky industry and you're on a spooky property, right? You gotta you've okay. It's you've brought a lot of things in here from different parts of the country to build these different sets. Have you, maybe you don't even believe in it, but have you ever experienced anything that you can't explain? That you can't explain even around here at the Dead End Hayride? Yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while there's, there's weird stuff like, like lights that get left on, but they definitely didn't get left on (laughs) or like noises or whatever. And it's like, it's like, oh shoot, Brad, you forgot to shut off the audio in the butcher shop or whatever. And it's like you walk out there and the audio's off. <laughs> but you heard it. Like yeah. you heard it before you started walking over. Um, sure. I mean your mind you know, some of it I'm sure is mind mind games that your mind plays on you, but yeah. I mean there's anything you think of that kind of made the hair on the back of your neck stand up? Like we we had an attraction where the prison currently sits that was um, we built it as an old asylum and uh, we tore it out a number of years ago just because it was it was really, really old for haunted house sets. Yeah. It was extremely uncomfortable to walk through, mm. like like eerily uncomfortable, like even in the daylight, it shouldn't be this uncomfortable to walk through it. But it's like, even the actors, they're like, no, I'm okay. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to act. (laughs) I don't want to act. And that's that. It just, it just doesn't give me a good feel. Um, What did you furnish this asylum with? Oh man, we had all sorts of old stuff in there. Old doors, old wheelchairs. 
I think we even had some old beds out of old, you know, uh, tuberculosis facilities or whatnot um, in there. So, did you get that stuff from like actual, like a from a trade show, or did you go to a? No, we we buy a lot of stuff off of Facebook Marketplace, and at at the time that would have been Craigslist. Yeah. Right. Um, we find all sorts of old stuff. So it could have been, sure, very well from an old sure. insane asylum. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. That'd be fun. <laughs> I'm not scared. You're scared. <laughs> yeah, I'm not scared. You're scared. Uh, that I, that that is kind of creepy though. If you got it, <laughs> your whole group saying, hey, "I don't want to go into that room." Yeah. 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 Oh, and then buddy. like tools would go missing. Like I can remember we were tearing down. We were tearing down the asylum like a handful of years ago, and like we found tools that went missing. You know, and it's like, how did this get in here? Yeah. Like. Like, did somebody leave it here? I don't remember leaving it here. Yeah. So that was sort of weird. Oh, boy. That'd be fun. I just want to... I, I Have you ever just taken people out, even when you're all done, you've closed up for the night, it's still dark, but it's like, hey, we're just... Us group of three, we're going to go walk through some stuff. <laughs> the actors, the actors like to do that. They like to they like to walk through the haunted house sets when they're, yeah. when they're not lit up. And, when it's all quiet and right. not big production value going right. on. So, okay, so we've covered creepy stuff, but it's not just, right, we've talked about we're on your family's farm. I just want you to kind of explain to the family that has young kids, right, this isn't just for adults to come and get scared, right? You have something for everybody. Yeah, and if and if you're the type of person who just does not like to get scared, maybe the pumpkin patch is more your more your speed. Yeah, and um, and we got a ton of stuff to do for the daytime between corn pits and giant slides and rides out to the pumpkin patch and get yourself an apple cider slushy and and go hang out and shoot the apple cannons or or listen to a band on the stage that we're on right now. Yeah, um, you know the daytime pumpkin patch has a lot to offer. You know, families with little kids. Otherwise, you know, if you want to get you want to get scared, come out to the Dead and Hayride. Come when it gets dark. Yep. Yep, for sure. Well, good. I, I think these guys are, I can see Ben closely holding the camera <laughs> into his body. So I think he might be getting a little tired here. So we're going to wrap it up. But I want you to just uh, let the people know, if you've never been out to the Dead and Hayride, where they need to go, what they need to do. Grab a couple friends, preferably ones that are a little bit more scared than you are. Get online because uh, you're this this event. As it gets closer to Halloween, we sell out. Right, yep. time slots sell out, ticket types sell out. So so don't waste. Get your tickets, get them locked in, and um, and bring a big group of people, group of friends. You guys will love it. It'll be great. Um, it'll be everything you're talking about. And what's what's you've heard uh, the furthest somebody come from? You know we've got here, right? we've got a group that comes down from Canada each year. And like it's a small town, I, I don't remember exactly what town it is, but they're they're like a town of like 200 people, and they yeah. rent they rent two vans and they drive down each year, and they bring like 20 people with them. It's a Canadian yeah. caravan. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. Well, there you go, people. The Dead End Hayride has gone international, so 100. percent It's gone international. You have no excuse, especially if you're in uh, Northeast Central Minnesota. Come out to the Dead End Hayride, Jeremy. Thank you again for Thank coming. you guys for coming yeah, out. This yeah, has been yeah, a great time. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for sharing everything with us. Um, yeah. Get get on out here to the Dead End Hayride. Right, Ben? Yeah, Before Halloween. Before Halloween. And buy your tickets now. Yes. Get your tickets now. Thanks again for listening to the Soda Nerds. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us. We are available anywhere you get your podcasts. Look up the Dead End Hayride. We will tag it in all of the descriptions for the episode here, whether you're listening to the podcast or watching on YouTube. Make sure to leave us a review. Hit whatever stars you want. We love anything that we can get from you. Thank you again, Jeremy. You're a busy guy. Thanks, guys. Run out there and uh, do some more work. But that is it for us. And remember, it's fun to be a kid, even if you aren't one. Do so. Yeah.